converting to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Now, this is another one of those five use cases for scalable infrastructure automation. But this time we're taking developer instances and converting them to production ready RHEL. So if, where are we gonna start? We're gonna start with our inventories. So let's go have a look at our inventory. We have a group in this inventory where we have developer machines. So ultimately when a developed machine is ready and we were ready to convert it, we could do it this way, right? So let's go and allocate our center stream boxes. Now they're part of this uh, group inside of our inventory and we're gonna trigger our template against this. But now our template also needs something, right? So we're gonna need to add a survey. Now, why do we need the survey? Well, part of this conversion process requires to have a subscription. So when these systems come live and they come back after rebooting as RHEL systems, we wanna be able to have a subscription already attached and ready to go. So we're gonna use the survey as a way to query this. So when the user triggers a template, they're gonna be asked for these details, they're gonna put in these details, and obviously that will now be the subscription that gets used. So before we go, let's have a look at our, our systems themselves. So we've got an SSH into each system here. We're gonna have a look at what they're running. You can see it's sent our stream for both of them. And now we're just gonna tail the logs, right? I just wanna tail the logs a little bit because I wanna see some of the action, right? We're not gonna watch all the action, but I wanna watch some of the action. So now we have the log open here. You can see what's happening on that system itself. And basically we can go, we can trigger this template. So I'm gonna go and trigger the template. I'm gonna launch the template and we're gonna quickly put in the details. I'm gonna put in my own subscription details. And let me just put in my password here. And from here, we're gonna go trigger next and the process is actually gonna start. So we're gonna launch this and let's quickly open up our terminal so we can see what's going on. And you can see that this change is taking place already, right? So as the playbook is being triggered or as the template is running, you can see the, the change is taking place on the host. So this is, this is great. So we can see the step-by-step -step process of this and we can see what's gonna take place, right? Okay, welcome back. Now we can see the template has been successful. So what do we need to do? We need to actually convert these systems and we need to make sure that they've rebooted. And now that they've rebooted, are the systems actually showing as RHEL? And this is what we're gonna check. So we're gonna quickly SSH into each system. We're gonna have a look at the Red Hat release numbers and see that they coincide with the conversion process. So we can see that this has been converted successfully. Let us check the other node. And in this other node, we're gonna basically run the same thing and again, confirm if this release has been successful. So there we go, we can see that these things have been converted. Now, that's just a conversion. Now we can introduce the configuration and all these different steps, right? So let's go and run this, uh, this basic configuration for our production environment, where we're gonna go and create additional users. So you can see that our, our systems there have now been changed because we've added additional users. We're gonna do some Apache, we're gonna install Apache, we're gonna add a company disclaimer. We're gonna do all of these standardized processes now that these systems are production ready and they're ready to go. Now the key thing with all of this is obviously at scale, this is a massive benefit of being able to convert your development systems and all the servers that you've been working on and simply convert them uh, with an automation task instead of having to do all of this manually. So this is another reason why doing this at scale is a fantastic use case for the Ansible automation platform. And let's go quickly have a look at these systems and see that everything is right. We can see the disclaimer is there. Now I wanna check and make sure that our Apache has actually started and has been running the way that we wanted it to. And there we go, it's all up and running.